As if you didn't already know, we're living in unprecedented times. The pace of evolution and adoption of artificial intelligence in our work is happening fast. So fast that it's seemingly not really possible to keep up. As soon as they think that we can spot some trends starting to establish themselves, things move on again. In 2024, Dora reported that the more AI was used, the worse the software delivery stability and throughput became. But we carried on using it and adapting to it anyway. And this change is obviously so big and so important that it's worth the effort of trying to keep up in and in touch with what's really going on to try and find out what lies beyond the hype and the fear, uncertainty and doubt that is seemingly spreading in equal measure. I'm very happy to see that Dora have now published their findings on the use of artificial intelligence in software development again for this year. A lot has happened since the last report, and I think that we're starting to learn more about what really works and what really doesn't. There are plenty of interesting things tucked away in this, I think, probably extremely important report. So let's take a look at some of what they have found and perhaps see how well it aligns with what we here on the Modern Software Engineering Channel have been thinking about in terms of how to make the best use for, of AI for building software. That's our topic for today. Welcome to the Modern Software Engineering channel. I'm Dave Farley, and if you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content here today, hit like as well. As regular viewers of this channel will already know, I am a very big fan of the work of the Dora Group in Google. I think that this is the most credible sociological research into what really works and what really doesn't in software development. So I'm always interested when they publish a new report. As I said in the introduction, we're in the midst of extremely big changes. And whatever happens next in our world of creating software systems, you can bet that it's going to be more different from what went before than probably any other change that we've ever seen. The landscape of software development is changing so fast that we really are in uncharted territory. So in the absence of a map for our future, what can we see that can help us to navigate better? The first thing is the scale of the change. Last year, when I spoke about artificial intelligence, a significant number of responses would nearly always say something like, it's all hype and we've seen this kind of thing before and it's going nowhere. But this year's Dora research says something rather different. They say that 95% of survey respondents rely on artificial intelligence programming assistance. And 80% of those people say that this has improved their productivity. This is true even while a significant fraction say that they don't trust the output from the AI systems that they are relying on. I want to come back to that point a little bit later on. But for now, I think it's reasonable to say that these things are helpful, have a powerful impact, despite being imperfect and unreliable, which all sounds rather like human beings, actually. This certainly aligns well with my experience of using artificial intelligence, LLMs, machine learning systems, whatever we want to call them, to help with programming. They are interestingly different tools that can help us to think and can help us to make progress in different ways, at least different to what I expected when I imagined using such devices before they existed. But we certainly can't rely on them for giving accurate, truthful answers. This is challenging and problematic, but it's not nothing. And at 95% reliance, that means it's already changed the game, whatever you think that the future might hold. So I think that we can all agree that if we're allowing our AI assistants to just write the code or tests or whatever else we want them to do, and we're leaving them to it, we're probably making a big mistake. We need to find ways to keep their failings better under control. Or as Dora put it in their report, successful AI adoption takes more than just the use of tools. In fact, based on my reading and perhaps biases, this is the most pervasive theme coming from the research. I want to pause there and say thank you to our sponsors. We are sponsored by Equal Experts, Transfic, and Mailtrap. 
Equal Experts is a multinational consultancy built on applying the ideas and techniques that we talk about on the Modern Software Engineering channel every week. And we're building systems from their, their clients using those principles. All of these companies, though, offer products and services that are extremely well aligned with the topics that we discuss here every week. So if you're looking for excellence in continuous delivery and software engineering in general, click on the links in the description below and check out our sponsors. The Dora report identifies seven capabilities that are important for a successful AI adoption. Half of these are extremely well aligned with the approach that we have found important in our own explorations of the use of AI so far, and that I'd characterize as representing a strong modern software engineering approach to using them. Strong version control, working in small bashes, user-centric focus to solving problems, and quality internal platforms are obvious topics that anybody familiar with our channel will recognize. It's not that I disagree with the others, but I'll come to that later. My nervousness and argument in the use of AI assistance is really based around the idea that programming at its fundamental level requires three things, all of which AI puts at significant risk. We need to be able to specify what we want in detail and with precision. Programming languages are designed to help us to do this and are much better at being precise and deterministic than natural human languages. So if we aren't very careful in our use of AI, the AI can make it more difficult to achieve this precision. If we're describing that what we want in natural language, that's inevitably going to be more difficult and, and vaguer. We're not being as precise as we are with the programming language. And if we give up and abdicate our responsibility to accurately specifying what it is that we are aiming to achieve, then this is unlikely to end well. And the DORA research confirms that this doesn't usually end well. One of the important techniques that we can use to help us to achieve this vital clarity and precision that deep traditional programming languages are designed to deliver is to apply greater precision to the development process with AI in the form of more thorough, more effective specification. In particular, applying the techniques of behavior-driven development and acceptance test-driven development. This, to my mind, is represented in the DORA advice where they call out the importance of user-centric focus, specifying what it is that we're attempting to deliver, the behaviors that we're attempting to deliver to our users. But as well as being precise about what it is that we want, we also need to confirm that we actually actually got it in the sense that the systems that we build do what we want them to do. For that, we need to clearly express what it is that we want, but in ways that also allow us to repeatably and reliably verify that the system actually delivers on those needs and that we still have what we wanted after every small change. This is another idea massively reinforced through the use of acceptance test-driven development techniques. This built-in process of verification is, if anything, even more important with systems built with AI assistance because the AIs aren't reliable on their own. They can and will change more than you ask for. Talk to any experienced programmer who has used AI assistance and they'll complain about the AI running off and doing too much when they only asked it to take a small step. So keeping our AI programming assistance in check is vitally important, as the DORA research highlights with its advice that we must make progress in small steps. This means actively working to constrain the AIs very often. They are often over eager to rush ahead with no insight and little control. This is what I mean when I talk about the vital importance in programming of making progress incrementally. Good software development, whether involving AIs or not, involves making small, taking small steps and then immediately verifying after each small change that whatever it is that we have done represents a good step in whatever direction we think is a good direction. Again, this is even more important when we're working with AI because without this, we're in grave danger of losing the determinism that traditional computer programming was built upon. If we're not cautious about this, without repeatable deterministic foundations, we will be building completely on sand. The AI can 
and often will change the entire implementation after any small change. Given this is the case, how can we tell that our system still does what it's meant to do after such a change? If this doesn't sound familiar, then you aren't a regular viewer of this channel because that's really what modern software engineering and continuous delivery are all about, AI or not. When working with an AI, we must be able to verify after every small change that things are still working as we expected them to. We need to work in ways that allow us to verify the correct operation of our system continuously. Without that, we can never be entirely sure that our order processing system won't have been turned into something else entirely different based on the whims of our AI programming assistant. Maybe not Skynet, but we simply can't assume that the AI will stay on any previously established track. In the current generations, they are simply not very good at doing that. Some recent metadata research reported on in this week's New Scientist magazine says that one third of AI search tool answers make unsupported and biased claims that aren't backed up by any reliable sources. These answers bear no real relationship to established facts or references. They're simply made up. According to this research, the Perplexity AI failed this test by producing unsupported claims 97% of the time. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Perplexity the company complained about the validity of this research, though I confess it looked okay to me as a layperson. One of the risks of AI is that they can generate or regenerate the code for whole systems in a single step. And that may end up being complete gibberish, bearing no relationship at all to what it is that we want. This doesn't happen all of the time, but it only needs to happen once for you to have a really bad day. And it does happen. My ideas of the fundamentals of programming are foundational unless we are operating under the delusion that we can get everything perfectly correct first time. If we adopt natural language for programming with AI, we reduce our ability to define what we want with precision. Unless we can define our expectations of the system in detail and with precision, then how can the AI know what it is that we wanted from it, let alone whether we achieved it or not? And without the ability to detect that our system is no longer doing what we wanted to, how can we step back safely to a version that we knew worked before if we don't have a reproducible deterministic process? This vital central value of version control that we can make progress at all without being perfectly omniscient is important to the way that programming works and all of our thinking about it, really. I think that thinking about programming in terms of these three valuable properties of it is a useful model that helps us to reason about the fundamentals of programming, which in turn is helpful to think about programming in general, but even more importantly at the moment when we're thinking about programming with AI, specifically this new way of doing things. I think that I see this strongly reflected in the Dora model that they recommend. If we think of the value of quality internal platforms in terms of the attributes of broader system design, rather than the detail of function by function programming design, then quality internal platforms give us the ability to depend on our prior work and isolate change through that mechanism of design. If the platform remains unchanged, however crazy the AI on using it might be, at least the core functions represented by the platform are correct. So this supports our ability to make progress in smaller, more controlled, more deliberate steps, more version controlled steps, and so to make progress more incrementally. We need to establish stable points in our designs that we can build upon without thinking or caring too much about or in too much detail about how they actually work. Of the other markers for successful AI adoption that Dora calls out, I think it's clear that establishing clear communicated AI stance means establishing some guide rails to help us to avoid floundering around and getting lost. The challenge with this is that it's new to all of us so much that it's hard to figure out who's advising who perhaps and what the, what the best advice should be. I and my friends are convinced 
that the fundamental lessons of our discipline, ideas like making incremental progress in small controlled steps, verifying your changes after each of those steps, and working to keep systems modular so that we or the AI can make changes in one place without forcing changes everywhere else, remain wise and good advice even for the most enthusiastic of AI programmers. If anything, these things are even more important when we're programming with AI assistance than when working without it. This is the advice that I would advise that you clearly communicate in your organizations. And this is borne out in the Dora findings. I'd also advise any company adapting to the use of AI to be very cautious in how you do this, particularly when you're talking about junior developers. I've heard of a few companies that have mandated that juniors are not allowed to use AI without fairly close detailed supervision. That makes some sense to me. It's all too easy for the AIs to run away on their own, even on the guidance of very experienced or expert programmers. Juniors are in danger of being unaware of the risks that they are taking if they don't verify everything that the AI produces. The other two pieces of advice from Dora that seem sensible to the point of maybe being obvious to me are around the data in your organization. You need to be giving the AI good data and managing data sensibly. The law of garbage in, garbage out still holds and maybe is even more important in the use of AI. Perhaps the scariest finding for me of all, and for everyone that I've pointed it out to, that the Dora research finds, goes back to those initial statistics that I called out. 95% of respondents said they would depended on AI for software development. 80% of those said that they improved their productivity. But, and here's the terrifying part, only 30% said that they didn't trust the outputs of the AI. This means that 70% of respondents to the Dora survey tr did trust the output from the AI. This is simply not backed up by the evidence. Remember that according to the New Scientist article, somewhere between 30 and 95% of the answers from AI systems have no basis in fact and are made up. So, as far as I can see, 70% of Dora's respondents to this survey are either crazy or misunderstood the question. My friend Kent Beck told me of a programming session where he created a test TDD style and asked the AI assistant to write some code to make it pass. The AI reported back that it had written the code and a bunch of other tests, taking too big a step, a bigger step than Kent was looking for. It went on to say that now 80% of the tests were passing. Kent was obviously suspicious. 80% of the tests passing is a failing grade in test-driven development. The code is only deemed good when all the tests pass. Kent looked further, and of course, the test that he had started with was not one of those that was now passing. So the AI was setting its own success criteria, marking its own homework and declaring success, even while it was failing on the basis of the success criteria that it had been told to respect. The best advice to communicate to everyone when working with AI is to verify that it's doing what you want it to after every small change. Without this, we can't be sure that it is. Thank you very much for watching. And if you've watched this far, uh, I hope you enjoy our channel content in general. Why not consider becoming a member of our channel and joining our Patreon community? You can do that for very low cost and there's lots of useful information on our Discord channel and lots of free stuff that you get as benefits of being a member. And I'd like to, as usual, thank our great Patreon community for your support in helping us to make videos like this. Thank you very much and bye-bye.